Let's take an old kitchen pan and using some sandpaper remove all the paint that is on the back because we need to work on pure aluminium. Let's take away also the handle that isn't necessary is held in place by these two small rivets so using a drill we can remove them very easily. I screw away now a filter in front of my camera lens. These filters are very cheap and I need to place it in the middle of the pan. I use a pencil to trace the shape of this filter all around. Follow this line right now using a drill and make a lot of holes so we can take away the middle of the pan. Push from behind and we finally made a hole. Use a file to adjust the hole and after 4 or 5 minutes on working on this finally is the result a very precise hole and the filter stay just in the middle we need to glue the filter so using some silicone we can put it all around and after 10 or 12 hours that the silicone dries this is again the result very precise thing I bought on eBay this 10 watt LEDs I bought 20 of them they are very cheap and you find the link below on eBay to buy them I put them all around the pan, but to do something much more precise, I decide to print this PDF. You find it also in the link description. Description, and I use a hammer to punch a hole all around and follow all the lines. These LEDs have two holes inside, so I just have to redo also the holes on the pan using a smaller drill bit. It comes out a very precise job like this. Let's take now some screws and some thermal paste to secure the LEDs in place. The thermal paste is absolutely necessary because these LEDs get hot. If they go over 60 degrees probably they burn out so I secure them on the aluminium of the pan and I secure them also with some small screws. The uh, pan in this case works like a heat sink and transfer the heat from the LEDs away. We secure them from the back side with a nut. As you can see it comes out a very precise job and it seems like a, a real light I can buy in the shop. Let's take now some uh, uh, copper cables or just some metal wire to connect all the LEDs. So I made a small ring and a bigger ring and I placed it all around the LEDs. A soldering iron will help me to solder the cables all around the LEDs on the outside and in the inside so we could we have connect all the uh, leds in parallel so let's take a jack this is a power jack and i just have to put it inside the hole where the handle was mounted on the side i can place this little switch and i secure it on the front with the uh, with his nut to drive the, um, the LEDs, we need a driver. In this case, I bought a wrong one, and uh, it isn't very powerful. I bought 10 watt power driver, but in this case, I need to 200 watt LED driver. But I prefer to use a 12 volt LED dimmer. The dimmer uh, helps me to control the power that goes to the LEDs just using some buttons. So I connect the two cables to the ring a metal ring one in the inside and one in the outside and this is the connection you can see on the right it's very easy let's take a 12 volt battery this battery will give the power to all the ring light so i connect the cable and the cable goes just inside the jack and once we push the switch we can now use the dimmer to control the power so I can use this light in, a, in any kind of light situation if I need more light or less light in, depending on what type of video I'm recording. So uh, it's very interesting on the top there is a mode button that uh, makes a strobe effect as you can see if you want to make some music video this is very interesting very strange effect so let's put all the power all the power on like this and we can screw the pan in front of my camera as you can see after we just have to make a couple of turns and the pan is secured in place we need to plug in the jack and we are ready
ring light. As you can see, there aren't shadows on the subject because each light compensates the shadow of the offset one. These lights are very expensive. In the shop you will spend about $300 instead of building yourself one, you will spend about $40. So I made some video tests for you, some macro footage and also some extreme night tests. So probably I will almost never use this type of light in this extreme situation. I will just use it in my laboratory to film my tutorials and compensate all the shadows. enjoyed the video let me know below with a thumbs up that is always appreciated and I want to thanks a lot also Matt from do-it-yourself perks that gave me a lot of inspiration with this project so if you don't know him go to check him out and I leave you also with my past video how to make a fly cam a professional stabilizer for video men recycling two old hard drives so see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial ciao ciao Hey Rilof, I uh, just wanted to say I like how your LED ring light has turned out. I uh, think that how you've mounted it on the uh, metal is a brilliant idea because that will allow it to be obviously a lot brighter because it will keep the LEDs uh, much cooler. So uh, great work, I really like what you've done and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you'll come up with next. <laughs>